There's nothing better than hearing a true saving gospel. His substitutionary penal atonement as Jesus vicariously died in the place of sinners and in so doing gave himself unto death upon Calvary's cross for on the behalf of our sins. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly. Without an apology, gotta get that theology to God, hallowed be, cause this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub. Today, I wanna give you guys some good God news. Some good gospel news brought to you by my friend, Steve Lawson. Let's check out this sermon he did and let's talk about it. Gospel. Could there be a different saving gospel? Uh, could there be a different redeeming gospel? Only one gospel. Could it be that God has one plan of salvation in the New Testament and he had a different one in the Old Testament? By the way, he's uh, expounding on Galatians chapter 1, which really uh, exposits uh, a, a mini Roman, so to speak, as some theologians have called, where Paul really lays out that there is no other gospel than the true saving gospel. Uh, could it be that God has one plan for Gentiles, but God has a different gospel for, for Jews? No. Uh, could it be that God has one gospel for those who hear the gospel and receive Christ, but a different way for those who, who never hear? One gospel. Paul says, I'm astonished, I'm amazed that you have deserted him for a different gospel. This word different, do you see it there in your Bible? Heteros. It, it denotes another of a totally different kind. In other words, there really are only two gospels, the true gospel and the false gospel. Uh, this yeah, and I know that Steve Lawson would say that the false gospel is not really a true gospel, right? Hence the term false gospel, right? Saving gospel and the non-saving gospel. And he says to them, you have equivocated with the true saving gospel in order to now be seduced by mm. these false teachers for a different gospel. And this different gospel, Paul says, and will tell us, is no gospel at all. And, and this is why channels like mine exist, uh, ministries where they are staunch on the gospel and those who oppose it because only the gospel saves. So if we have a false gospel, false God that's being, um, you know, preached, those that pastor is ultimately damning people with the false gospel. And I mean, that's what the Apostle Paul says in verse nine. Let him be accursed. If someone is preaching contrary to the gospel, let that person be an anathema. They're in a curse. They're condemned themselves. It is a counterfeit gospel. It is a sham salvation. It is a fake message. It is a rip-off religion. Mm. It is a mangled message. There is a way that seems right to a man. But the end. But the end thereof is the end of death. That's right. Notice at the beginning of verse 7, as Paul continues with this astonishment, he's dumbfounded mm -hmm. that you have given up diamonds for dirt, that you have given up the truth for a lie, he says, which is really not another. Paul is saying it's not a saving gospel. It is not a true gospel. And uh, Brother Steve brought this up in his sermon as well, which I'll link in the description. Notice in the text it says that Paul is astonished. It's like there should be some kind of, there should be astonishment when people embrace a false gospel over and against the true saving gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That should vex us. That should energize us, so to speak fuel us to proclaim the true saving gospel we should not be dead when people preach when i mean dead i mean ir ir irrelevant right we we consider it oh 
whatever, to each their own. No, we should be fueled by evangelistic efforts to proclaim the good news of the gospel to those who are lost. Just want to bring back some of that fuel and that, that, that zeal, right? We, we need that. And by saying this, Paul is absolute, absolutely emphatically asserting that there is only one way of salvation, that there is only one saving gospel. He is asserting the exclusivity of salvation in Jesus Christ alone. Hmm. Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. Amen. (laughs) Positive assertion. Now, negative. This is why we are not uh, synchronistic, uh, syncretistic in our evangelism. We're not inclusive, meaning, hey, all religions, hey, you know, we're all just trying to do the right thing. No, we're an exclusive religion. This is a exclusive faith, Christian faith. It's only in Christ. Only in the name of Jesus, that's it. That's in his person and work shall a man be saved. But Steve Lawson, he's going in. So let me let, me, let, me let him work. Nile, no man comes unto the Father but through me. Mm. Peter before the Sanhedrin said, And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. The apostle Paul would write, there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, the testimony born at the proper time. Now, to desert this gospel is to, re- to be removed from standing in the truth. Mm. What, what, what is the true gospel? Look a couple of verses earlier, just parenthetically for a moment. At the end of verse 3, the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 4, who, personal pronoun, who, gave himself for our sins. There is substitutionary penal atonement Mm -hmm. as Jesus vicariously died in the place of sinners and in so doing gave himself unto death upon Calvary's cross for on the behalf of our sins result so that he might rescue us, deliver us, save us from this present age. This world is going to hell. Mm. This world is under judgment. This- A lot of people don't like this doctrine um, where the penal substitution uh, atonement of Christ, where Christ took on the wrath of the Father, right? He took on the wrath we rightly deserve. It's just as Steve talked about. It is substitution. Christ took on the wrath we deserve so that we get the righteousness of his that we don't deserve. It is all substitution. That is at the heart of the gospel. The just for the unjust. Right? Uh, So much theology that we can delve into and bring out. But that's the heart of the gospel. Christ dying for our sins. Taking on our sins. And those whom Christ died for, he actually atones for and he gives life. He forgives those sins. Right. And since he raised from the dead, since Jesus raised from the dead, it actually is a promise that we, too, who trust in him will be raised as well. Oh, so, so good. So good. This world is on a collision course with judgment on the last day. And Jesus Christ, by his death upon the cross, has rescued Sinners Mm. from great danger. Amen. Even as Paul was astonished and amazed in the first century at how easily Galatians were beguiled and seduced, even so we should be bewildered in this hour and in this day. Mm. When we see evangelicals sign the ECT document, and pretend that there is no difference between the gospel of the scripture and the gospel of Rome. So the uh, EC to- ECT document was the evangelicals and Catholics together. So there's a movement and there's many movements like this, unfortunately, uh, to the embarrassment of the Christian faith that embraces a 
embraces and walks hand in hand t- together with people who embrace a false gospel. Unfortunately, you can find people compromised in the Christian faith. I mean, we talk about these videos all the time. People who have compromised, who are willing to walk together hand in hand, lockstep with Rome, even though Rome embraces a false gospel. Walk hand in hand with with uh, Mormons. I think of Dallas Jenkins with the creator of the uh, Chosen film. Walks hand in hand with Mormons. Unfortunately, you have many people like that. It's 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 it is a shame. It is a shame. We should be astonished and, and, astonished. and amazed at those who would sign other documents, who would cave in in order to put their arms around false teachers and false brethren as if there is no difference between what we believe and what they believe. Hmm. We should be astonished as we have turned on television and so-called Christian leaders have gone on the Larry King show, for example, in the past. Now, we talked about that here before, but he's going to recap. You guys know who he's talking about. Let me just open up the cat. This is a uh, conversation where Joel Osteen went on the Larry King live and, and completely embarrassed himself. And it's at this moment, Joel Osteen declared himself at this moment, it probably, obviously probably before, but at this moment, definitely to be a um, enemy of the gospel. Let's, let's hear this. Here is your moment. Here is your hour. Here is your opportunity to, to preach the gospel to the nations. In one program, King said, we've had ministers on our program who said, you either believe in Christ or you don't. If you believe in Christ, you are, you are going to heaven. And if you do not believe in Christ, you're not going to heaven. Well, I can tell you what minister said that. John MacArthur. Yeah, because John MacArthur, before uh, Joel Osteen, was on Larry King Live, uh, old TV show for some of us older folks, right? <laughs> and... Uh, actually shared the true gospel and said that exact words. And it seems Larry King was actually quoting John MacArthur to Joel Osteen. Very interesting <laughs> comments enough, right? Joel Osteen's answer. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hmm. I'm reading the manuscript right here. I, I don't know. There's probably a balance I believe you have to know Christ, but I, but I think if you know Christ, if you're a believer in God, you're going to have some good works. I think it's a cop-out to say, I'm a Christian, but I don't ever do anything. That wasn't the question you were asked. Exactly. You were asked the question, do you have to believe in Jesus Christ in order to go to heaven? Fact, King yes. wouldn't let it go. Larry King said to Joel Osteen, What if you're Jewish? Now, Larry King is Jewish. Or if you're a Muslim, you don't have to accept Christ at all, do you? Olstein, you know, I'm, I'm very careful about saying who would or who wouldn't go to heaven. I don't know. King, if you believe, you have to believe. You know, he says he's very careful of saying who does not go to heaven, but the Bible actually tells us the answer. In John chapter 3, you know, we love the verse 16, but listen to verse 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. This is, this is scripture's declaration. That if a man does not believe in Jesus, <laughs> they are condemned. They are on their way to hell unless they repent. Jesus says, unless you repent, you will perish. That's not a good thing, right? We should be unashamedly echoing what the Bible says. But unfortunately, so many people are embarrassed of Scripture. Even Christ, they're all wrong, aren't they? Osteen. I don't know. Mm. Terrible. I spent a lot of time in India with my father. I don't know about all their religion, but I know they love God. No, they don't. They're God-haters. Exactly. I know they love God. 
I don't know. I've seen their sincerity. I don't know. Mm. Our jaws should be on the ground. Absolutely. Although he's revealing himself to be what he truly is. One who denies the very gospel of Jesus Christ in the exclusivity of his shed blood for the atonement of sin. That's Paul's amazement. And, and just a side note, we, we should be looking for opportunities to um, share the gospel. As many of you probably affirm, there are open doors that the Lord opens for many of us to proclaim the gospel. Where our friends, you know, you hear them at co-workers at work, they start talking about Christianity, right? Boom, open door, open door. You know, I, I look for those opportunities as we should all, right? Um, and I trust that none of us here tonight have passed the point of continually being shocked and amazed amen. at who punts on first down when this question is put forth. Second, I want you to note Paul's adversaries. As we continue to read verse 7, not only Paul's amazement, but Paul's adversaries. He goes on to talk about only there are some who are disturbing you. These some refer to the false teachers, and it only takes some to create a big mess. Uh, the Judaizer. Yeah, and this is why we don't ignore false teaching. This is why we don't sweep it under the rug and just say, hey, you know, we'll all figure it out eventually. No, as he said, a, and as scripture says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. We wouldn't drink a little poison, neither should we embrace a little false gospel. <laughs> right? And even the term little false gospel is actually a, a you know, play on words, right? But yeah, we have to, we have to be dogmatic about the true saving gospel. ...are trying to bring their Jewish legalism into the church and distort the gospel, and whenever the gospel is distorted, there is no place to stand. Amen. You are, you are greatly disturbed. This word disturbed means to trouble, to agitate, to shake up. And the idea is they, that this false gospel is shaking up their allegiance to the one true gospel. And so doing, they are troubling the church. Mm. He says, there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort. Do you see that? Want to distort. Now, this word distort means to change something into its very opposite. It is a, a total reversal. And he is saying they have totally reversed the gospel of grace into a gospel of works. Who want to distort the gospel, the one and only gospel of Christ. And in so doing, they pervert it and tamper it and dilute it. They were saying you have to keep the law and do your part in order to be righteous. You are justified by faith and works. You are sanctified by fleshly efforts. They were saying you have to be circumcised to be saved. You have to keep the Ten Commandments in order to be saved. You have to observe the holy days. You have to practice the ceremonial law. You must become like Jewish proselytes and submit to the Mosaic law in order to earn your way to God. Mm. There are many such adversaries of the gospel today. They acknowledge a place for the cross, but they deny the purity and the sufficiency and the finality and the exclusivity of the gospel. Mm. They claim that salvation is by faith and good works, by faith and water baptism, and by faith and church membership, or by faith and speaking in tongues, or faith and Hail Marys, or faith and the Mass, faith and last rites, faith and the treasury of merit, faith and buying indulgences. And then there are other adversaries of the gospel of a different kind. They are the cultists. They deny the Trinity. They deny the absolute deity of Christ. They deny the lordship of Christ. They deny the virgin birth, the sinless life, the substitutionary death, the bodily resurrection, mm. the second coming, 
They deny the eternality of hell itself. They deny forensic imputation of the perfect righteous, righteousness of Christ to those who believe. And these adversaries of the gospel claim that there are many ways of salvation, many ways to God. And they preach tolerance of all religions as long as one is sincere and loving to all. But they say, peace, peace, where there is no peace. They are blind leaders of the blind. They are clouds without water, trees without fruit, wandering stars for whom black darkness has been reserved forever. They are ear ticklers who strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. They clean the outside of the cup, but inside they are full of robbery. They are whitewashed tombs who are dead men's bones mm. on wow. the inside. So good, so good. I actually want to read a, a uh, scripture verse before we bring this to a close, and it's, it's the heart of the gospel. This is the heart of the gospel, how man is made right with God, right? It's, of course, it's uh, by the work of Christ, but listen, listen to this. Romans chapter 4, this is one of my favorite passages. Uh, Romans chapter 4, starting at verse 3, says, For what does the scripture say? I love that. <laughs> when man tells us his fancy they got their dreams, visions. We need to be people to say, what does the scripture say? Right. We need to say, what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Notice belief now imputed the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Right. Verse four. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. Right. If we could work for it, it wouldn't be by grace. It'd be by what we earn. Now, we know that scripture goes contrary to that idea. You even have in Romans chapter 3, verse 28, uh, the, uh, the one who is justified is justified by faith apart from works. Notice what verse 5 says. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Now, man's religion hates this idea. What do you mean don't work for salvation? What do you mean you don't have to work for salvation? This is exactly what the scripture says. Notice whose faith is counted as righteous, the one who does not work for it. Now, we're not talking about sanctification. We're not talking about true saving faith and what it looks like. We're talking about the faith God justifies is the one who does not work for it. Listen to verse six, just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Notice the apostolic interpretation. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. As I always ask, as I always ask, you want to be the blessed man? Do you want to be the blessed man or woman, of course, right? Don't work for it. Trust in Christ who worked for his uh, godly line, so to speak. We don't trust in our works. We trust in the one who worked who lived the perfect life on our behalf, died an atoning death, and was raised on the third day, demonstrating, one, his death was satisfied and accepted by the Father, and two, it demonstrates we too will be raised. I hope you have come and trust to Jesus Christ. Hope you have come to see his death, see him as alone being the Savior for sins. Hope you enjoy this video. Till the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture, and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below. Happy